Are you ready to check in with your therapist? Let's get into it. What's up YouTube? It's the Deborah Guy or my however you wanna know me as. Welcome back to another video. And like I was saying, we're gonna check in with a therapist. But a vampire one. Now I'm pretty sure, while playing through this, I'm pretty sure that the book talk girls are gonna go crazy for this game. Because come on, who wouldn't want a vampire as your therapist? I have no idea what this is all about. This was sent to me. So we're gonna check this out. This is a demo. Don't know when the full release is, but this is a demo of Vampire Therapist. So before we get into actually playing this, I wanna say a massive thank you to Streamers Connect and the devs for providing the key for the purpose of this video. So like I was saying, I'm pretty sure that the book talk girls are gonna go crazy for a vampire therapist. So without with all that said, I'm gonna give you some sound and we're gonna um check out what a vampire therapist is all about. So give me a second, there we go, there's your sound. Let's have a look. Vampire Therapist is a comedy game about an immortal undead Processing historical, yet personal traumas. Oh, okay. References to historical violence, depression, might be upsetting to some. This game was developed in consultation with a licensed therapist. Oh, that's brilliant. But should not be considered a substitute for therapy. Unless you're a vampire. Alright, so with that said. That was a good My disclaimer. My name is Sam Walls, and I'm a dead man. Well, kind of dead at least. See, I'm a vampire. Now, if you think that means all that Dracula hooey, like hissing, wearing skin-tight leather, and hunting mortals for sport, I wouldn't blame you one bit. That's exactly the sort of thing I did in my younger years with my former gang. And let me tell you, a vampire who's good with a gun can be a real terror. Okay. I got lucky, though. I met some kind mortals who saw beyond my fangs taught me my letters and showed me how my thinking was keeping me from finding any kind of peace after they passed on i roamed america's majestic wilderness for nigh on 90 years figuring out myself and what it means to be a vampire and i found revelation what i okay. realized was it's self thinking that make us monsters vampire. it's the self defeating ways we think anywho as the world started getting smaller my old vampire gang tracked me down them being my kin i wanted to help them see the world like i did but they still have the same monster mindset i used to have good thing i'm a quick draw okay but i got hooked up with this newfangled internet thing and found a vampire who's helping my kin find their way a fella named andrew makos supposed to be three thousand years old he invited me to come out to europe to learn from him i figure someone older than time has got to have the answers i'm going on a trip i guess this feels like my opportunity to do some good in the world. I've been lucky. Now it's time to give back. Vampires ain't monsters. Or at least, they don't have to be. And come hell or high water, I'm gonna prove it to them. Okay, that's, um, that's a really good intro. I like that. So I'm gonna guess the way that we pick... This is the address. Number 27, uh, Clean Flitter Mouse Strebe? Sure is a hell of a lot of ruckus for this time of night. People stay up late here. Wait a minute. These folk are vampires. Better watch myself. Yeah, you got this, Sam. Although, I'm going to say this. I don't know if anyone's actually watched the program Supernatural. He kind of looks like Jared Padalecki because he plays in a series called Walker who is a cowboy ranger and that's what he looks like. So I'm liking this already. Uh, good nothing, folks. Spring and see English? Yeah, hello, Alta. Are you here to party with us at the hottest club? Um... 
you're Andrew Makos. You mean the club owner? Yeah, that is why we are here. If you're lucky, he will invite us to the private party at the end of the night. Oh, okay. Well, what happens there? Mm, I think maybe it is too kinky for Americans to hear. Right, so, as I don't know the context of this game, there will be warnings. This may be, as the vampire says, a bit kinky. Well, what's so special about this club? Immernacht is the greatest club aller Zeiten. The owner makes sure everyone has a good time. If anyone acts without respect, they are banned from the club forever. You are free to do and be whatever you like, as long as you are harming no one. Okay. And I hear that they are now attracting sexy old cowboys. Shh, Maxi. He is old enough to be your grandfather. Oh, come on now. You're just flattering me. I'm only a couple hundred years old. Oh, my God. He is so cute, Reinhardt. Can I keep him? Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. I can cut loose. What kind of party is this? The kind where we dance all night and get sexy. Oh, here are them kind of vampires. Ach so, there are better things to suck than blood, are there? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright. Some things may have to get edited. But we'll have to carry on and figure this one out. Although uh. so we have to get past the bouncer first. If we do not, I'm thinking our night is ruined. Oh, wait a sec. There's something about what she just said. I can feel it. It reminds me of one of my revelations about the funny patterns in the way we vampires think. Well, let's see. One type of thinking I noticed I called hot branding. That's when we brand ourselves with names we can't get rid of. There's high noon mind. That's when we treat a situation like it's a do or die showdown. And there's saloon thinking. That's when we act either helpless or invincible, like we've just drunk a pint of moonshine. I can always check my journal if I need examples. I kept all my notes about the funny ways we vampires think in there. I think I know which one of them funny ways they're thinking in, though. Hold on, compadres. You seem like the kind who can make their own fun. I don't want to have my own fun. Even is the only place to be on Friday night. Amigos, you're putting too much weight on this thing. It's a nightclub, not a high noon showdown. The night's full of possibilities. Mm, Reinhardt, I don't know what this means, but I like the way the sexy American talks. <laughs> you make us think that maybe it is better we haven't gotten into the club because we are now meeting you. One of my lights just went out. you're not better i'm glad we met uh, i really gotta find andrew Makos though you have to get past the bouncer he decides who gets in and who doesn't and he hasn't looked halfway all night maybe i'll have a little word with him excuse me friend oh that's a creepy bouncer to to but i love the clovers uh, i'm here to see andrew Makos. Thanks, amigo. You have yourself a fine night, you hear? Cowboy, what about us? <laughs> yeah, sure, they're friends of mine. Have fun, mate. Well, come on, you two. We ain't got all night. Yeah. All right, so we got them in. And we're in the club as well. Dang, awful loud in here. Come on, my liver. Dance with us. Oh, you kids have fun. I'll catch up with you later. Tarnation, I'd rather you were go for giving birth than this. I better talk to whoever's slinging drinks in this here saloon. They ought to know where Andrew Makos is. But pardon me, ma'am. Well, well, look at you. We get a lot of 80s fashion Oh, here, if there's a book the top guys out there, they're going to call that a goth mummy. I'm sorry, they are. 
What can I get you, cowboy? The special's Red Bull and vodka. You down? I never drink Red Bull. I'm actually looking for the owner. Uh, he around tonight? Might be. What'd you say your name was? Sam Walls, begging your pardon. Hmm. Sam Walls, huh? I don't think I know anything about a Sam Walls. After all, I'm just a know-nothing bartender. She's branding herself a know-nothing. What'd I call that again? Well, hold on, what'd you just say? I said I don't know any Sam Walls. I'm just a know-nothing bartender. She's branding herself a know-nothing. What I call- well, hold on, what you- I said I don't know- All right. From where I'm standing, I see someone with style and confidence, not just a drink machine. Don't go branding yourself like that's all you are. Don't you go worrying about me, cowboy. The man upstairs warned me you were coming. I was just testing to see if you are who you say you are. Tell you what, let me give you something from our special reserve. I don't think you're looking for boots. Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. I was wondering where the blood was. I met some vampires outside, so I figured this was a vampire club. <laughs> you met some gods, honey. They're here to dance and have fun. See, I knew they weren't vampires. So all these people are mortals? How do you think the head vampire gets his blood? They can't wait to share it with him. It's a special experience. He's the only real vampire here. Well, him and Bert. Bert? You met him already. Bert, shuffle on over here. The doorman? Uh, yeah, the doorman. This one's here to see the big guy. Show him upstairs, okay? Have fun, mate. Good Have fun, mate. That's what he says. It's fucking it's just brilliant. Alright, here we go. Uh, howdy. It's Sam Walls to see you, sir. Uh, the guy who's been sending you all them V-mails. Yes. I know who you are, Samuel Walls. You have come here because you believe you can help our king. The question is, are you first able to help yourself? Oh, he sounds like Jigsaw. That's creepy. I've been fixing myself for more than a century now. I don't think I need help. Then you must prepare to learn a most difficult lesson. Uh oh. We all need help, Samuel. I am pleased that you have come to receive mine. Dang, you scared the heck out of me. He does look scary. You must allow an ancient vampire his games. You will play them regardless. Please, sit down. What an absolute pleasure it is to meet you at last. I found your messages most intriguing. I like his design. That's really cool. Very good therapist. <laughs> Afraid there ain't much here in the way of intrigue. I'm just a lonesome cowboy looking for answers. You know, I receive emails every day from vampires seeking my help. You are the very first to seek my aid in helping others. This alone makes you intriguing. <laughs> well, dang. I think you're going to be sorely disappointed when you get to talking to me. I'm just honored you're giving me the time of night. I have unlimited time, Samuel. I am pleased to share some of it with you. Our time can be rather sad in their ways. It is inspiring to see someone so young and eager to learn. Yeah, well, I wasn't much for learning when I was alive. Just making up for lost time, I guess. <laughs> it sounds as though you have been handling your own life better than most. I was particularly intrigued by these revelations you had while walking in nature. Oh, yeah. So, I can tell that this is going to be some sort of story game Nothing sort where you have to pick your right answers, I'm guessing, to get the proper answer you need. I like it already. I do like these sort of games, stories, anything that drives a story to a game, I enjoy those. Nothing's too mindless. The artwork itself is fantastic. So I'm, um, yeah, let's carry on. After a few decades, I started seeing patterns in the way we vampires think. Can you explain some of these patterns? I've tried to explain them to other vampires, but uh, it ain't never gone well. I could try though. See, we tend to assume certain things just because we've been believing them since we were alive. <laughs> or we decide the world's against us just because we're hungry or tired or something. And when we start tackling problems that ain't real, <laughs> we ain't fixing our real problems. That, that make any kind of sense? Fascinating, Samuel. These revelations that you had in the woods, 
Mortal psychologists have a term for them. They are called cognitive distortions. Okay. First of all, I would like this vampire to be my therapist. He sounds... Sounds calming. So yeah, I need him to be my therapist. Cognitive who's he what now? <laughs> cognitive distortions. They are exactly as you describe them. I will explain in a moment. Please, tell me about these specific revelations you had. Well, uh, I noticed how we stress ourselves out by making everything a battle of do or die absolutes. Uh, high noon mind, I call it. Like that feeling you get right before a big shootout. I must confess I have no experience with this feeling. I engaged in mortal combat long before the age of gunpowder. But the sentiment you describe mirrors the words of my old friend, Marky Aurelius. He used to say that the magnitude of life's challenges often turn us into our worst selves. Mm -hmm. You mean That's right. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Emperor? Of course, his name was Marcus. Marky was a bedroom name. <laughs> you mean you and the Emperor were... It was ancient Rome. Penetration was similar to a handshake. Okay. Did not expect that, but okay. Uh, my apologies. I somehow forgot you were American. But let us discuss this high noon mind. I believe we can broaden your definition. Mortal psychologists call this phenomenon of binary thought polarized thinking, but I like to call it Nosferatu thinking. Okay, so that's now changed. Nosferatu thinking? It means you are thinking in black and white. <laughs> I get it. That's pretty funny. I believe it encompasses the breadth of the distortion. One is not flatly weak or strong, good or evil, smart or stupid, a success or a failure. The one the thing I do like about this, I love indie games. Absolutely. Others. I enjoy them. There's been a lot of them on my channel. Not a lot of indie games have full on voiceovers. Now, this one absolutely has full on voiceovers and it's brilliant. Not every high noon gunfight ends in oblivion, correct? Yeah, that's true. Uh, getting shot still ain't fun, but it ain't the end either. A perfect example, Samuel. Now, try to catch me using Nosferatu thinking. I will give you a series of statements, and one of them will contain Nosferatu thinking. I will repeat them if you miss it. If I do not drink blood, I will surely die. Death eventually comes for us all. Mortals will always fear our kind. Did you miss my Nosferatu thinking? Let me start over. If I do not drink blood, I will surely die. Death eventually comes for us all. <laughs> well, that sounds like Nosferatu thinking. That's pretty black and white. We've cheated death ourselves. Although this thinking is binary, it is also true and therefore not a distortion. And death has already come for us, my friend. We simply cling to life. Please, let us try another. Mortals will always fear our kind. I right, try that one. For out to thinking right there. I've met mortals who knew who I was and weren't scared. Very good, Samuel. And even if you hadn't, to say mortals will. We have to think about it. Like I'm blonde, ginger, mortal. and brain cells don't always brain cell for me. Always is such a terminal word, is it not? Would you like to discuss more of your revelations with me? All right, let's explain what we're thinking. Vampires, uh, we can get the feeling of the power that comes with immortality and strength, but then we get hopeless and aimless over time. It's kind of like the fellow you see in the saloon at the bottom of a bottle of whiskey. Either he thinks he can fight everyone, or he's crying into them last drops because he thinks life's hopeless. It's saloon thinking. Two extremes that probably ain't true. A fascinating observation, Samuel. Your saloon thinking was described in my time as the battle between hubris and nemesis, the twin excesses of arrogance and self-pity. Oh man, it make me wish What's I got some words? schooling. Maybe I would have figured this the, stuff the out. The developers earlier. really thought all this out. You live forever, my friend. And no like I said in the um, disclaimer at the beginning, they really have thought well into this, especially um, consulting actual um, therapists. That's that is fantastic. What you have identified is a phenomenon where individuals perceive either an illusion of control. Mortal psychologists call this phenomenon you have described a control fallacy. 
Rarely do we have complete power over our situations or no power at all. But we create this illusion that stops us from attempting to change our perceived situations. Yeah, you're right about that. I used to think I'd never get away from my gang. Maybe that's what made me stick with them for so long. Yes, you see how cognitive distortions keep us from facing reality, whatever that reality may be. Of course, I am so old and powerful that I am always in control. Well, that's a bit too much. Well, you're testing me, ain't you? That's a control fallacy right there. Well done, Samuel. I am indeed very powerful. The cosmos holds no awareness of Andromachos. Of course, as you expertly pointed out with your analogy about the man at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, a control fallacy can be positive or negative. Okay. Listen to my next few statements and try to find a control fallacy. Simply let me continue if you do not detect one. The sun will eventually burn out. I will roam a cold, dead earth, and there is little I can do about it. Mm. My kitty cat died. I shall be lonely forever. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about your sweet kitty, but you could always pick up a new one. Or there's lots of them just waiting for a loving home, so you don't need to be lonely. <laughs> it was just an example, Samuel. Well spotted, but I do speak from experience. I felt this way once when a fellow I was dating had our cat mummified. Oh, okay. Very detailed, this game. I went into a murderous depression that nearly decimated the continent. But I had the power to help myself all along by adopting a new friend in need of a home. Oh, dang, don't let me get on your bad side. I doubt you shall see it, Samuel. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? See, and let's talk about how Brandon. Be in a gang. They were my whole existence. If you asked me who I was, I would have said, no, I'm a murdering bastard. Once I got away, I realized how small-minded that was. I was Sam before I was a murdering bastard. But that's how I was choosing to brand myself. My old gang's still around, and they're still branding themselves like that. They can't see themselves as anything but killers. Very astute, Samuel. I favor the clinical term, however, which is labeling. You correctly discovered that labeling is a reductive act. When we call ourselves names, even if we find them accurate, we create prophecies we are doomed to fulfill. For millennia, I thought of myself as a killer. It was not untrue that killing was how I made my way in the world. I was an unstoppable warrior and assassin. But with this label, I limited myself for ages. I did not only kill people, I also killed potential aspirations I might have had. Okay. See you can so he actually saw things as well. In my next few statements. That's good. I am so old, I am ancient. Oh, come on. I know you've been kicked. But according to definition, I am ancient. Huh. Well, you look pretty good for being. The secret is moisturizer. But let us continue. Yeah, I know that. Bought you this year. Nothing wrong with a good bit of um, moisturizer. Call me whatever you like, but don't call me late for dinner. How shall I describe myself? Ah, uh, yes. I am in. Well, that's about as clear a labeling as it gets. Uh, yeah, we vampires tend to do a lot of killing, but reducing ourselves to killers ain't doing us any favors. Excellent, Samuel. You are correct. Labels can be cages that we lock ourselves in. I was a mere murderer for most of my existence because that is how I labeled my... Yeah, I did the same thing. Sam Walls, the murderer, reprobate, and good for nothing. Those are not how I would describe the Sam Walls I see before me. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? <laughs> I think that's all of them. Or at least the ones that were the most obvious to me. That you recognize the concept of cognitive distortions at all is most impressive, Samuel. What took me nearly three millennia to understand took you nearly two centuries. Oh, come on, you're just flattering me. I'm He's just a good a cowboy stumbling his way and a good vampire. Life. Give me a second. Okay, so we're going to continue. Sorry. Are you now? Tell me, Samuel. What kind of cognitive distortion are you exhibiting when you call yourself a dope? Yeah, I'm doing some labeling. I gotta watch myself, huh? Yeah, see, so we can't label ourselves either. That's not good. As long as we retain any humanity, we will have cognitive distortions. What we are aiming for is not to become perfect beings, but to understand and accept ourselves. 
As long as we can recognize cognitive distortions, we can address our real challenges. One cannot drink blood from a straw man, after all. Didn't try. You can turn the straw man into a straw. Probably not. But anyway. I ain't never heard that one before, but I like it. If it helps solidify the concept in your mind, then I am well satisfied. I know you came to learn from me, so I will do my best to honor your good intentions. Let us ensure that you understand the concepts of labeling, control fallacies, and Nosferatu thinking. I will give you a series of statements, and each one will contain a cognitive distortion for you to identify. I will begin. Not if not very I good at this. over my vampire friends, I know I'm going to have to deal with guano all over the place when they turn into bats at the end of the night. Well, that there's a control fallacy, sir. You're acting like you've got no control, but you could lay down some ground rules for guests, or some newspaper. Or express concern to my friends that they have not been toilet trained. Very good, Samuel. Let me try another. I am Andromachus, the ancient darkness, the scourge of the Mediterranean, the mortal's bane. Well, that's definitely some intense labeling. But those are some hard names to get over. You are not wrong. Those names followed me for millennia. It was most stifling. Let me try another then. If my club's revenues do not significantly increase, I will- That there's gotta be news for out to thinking. There's a huge space between making a ton of profit and living on the street. Indeed, you are correct. I run my club at a considerable loss, but 3,000 years of banking interest means that money is not really an object to me anyway. Okay, see, we got that correct straight off. We had some good thinking. Samuel, now I am not only intrigued by you, but also impressed. I would very much like to teach you my ways, but I must demand something of you first. Anything. I'm here to learn. You must receive therapy yourself. I will not have you seeing clients without a commitment to your own mental health. Okay, so now we're going to get heavy. Yes, it's good to talk about mental health because right now it is June and it's Men's Mental Health Month. So, this is a good thing. Uh, now, hold on just a minute. I, I don't know that I need therapy. I'm feeling pretty good about myself these days. Samuel, we all need therapy to live in this world. You have been speaking in cognitive distortions since the moment you walked into my office. I have. I didn't even notice. They are most insidious. But I am here to help you identify and challenge them. You have walked alone for too long, Samuel. Allow me to share my experience with you. Such a nice therapist. I like that. <laughs> well, all right, if you say so. I appreciate your taking the time to work on this old cowpoke. poke. We have all the time in the world, Samuel. But for now, you must be eager for something fresh. Please, dance. Drink your fill. We will begin tomorrow. Okay, then. Well, sir, it's been an honor. You don't have to call me sir, you know. Oh, all right then, Andromachos. Andromachos. Hey, Andromachos. Andromachos. <laughs> Just call me Andy. <laughs> all right, Andy. I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, that's, uh, that was a good little therapy session. I like that. Hey, look at all them mortals. Clint Eastwood again. How'd it go, cowboy? Seems I'll be sticking around. Guess I better get used to things around here. Good to hear. About time someone helped Andy with his work. Seems you vampires have a lot of problems to fix. Name's Crimson, by the way. Fine meeting you, Crimson. How do you know so much about what Andy's doing? Pillow talk. I'm his blood partner. No shit. How's a mortal get hooked up with an ancient vampire? I'm a rock climber. I stumbled into one of his lairs in Madagascar, found a cave while climbing a mountain, and there he was, naked in a hot tub. Dang, <laughs> must have been a sight. You ain't kidding, cowboy. Didn't expect a luxury apartment with a gorgeous naked vampire inside of a mountain. Okay, I think we might have to leave it in a minute. We hit it off, and he asked me to come back here with him. I like an adventure, so I said, what the hell, I'll date the gorgeous Dracula. But what are you doing talking to me, cowboy? The blood's running hot on the dance floor, and these kids don't mind a little biting. There ain't no way I'm dancing. There's gotta be a better way to get something fresh to drink. 
Reinhard Lok. It's the sexy old guy again. Oh god, not, not these two again. You should buy us a drink, old guy. You'll probably get lucky. Actually, you'll definitely get lucky. With that said, I'm gonna leave that there. So, um... That is Vampire Therapist. It'll be coming out soon. This is the demo. Um, definitely can get raunchy. I have to tell you that. It definitely can get raunchy. So we just discovered how we're thinking as a vampire. The vampire himself, Andy. Very good therapist. I would like him myself as a therapist, please. It'll help me out with my thinking. Or lack of. But yeah, um... This is gonna be a great. This is gonna be a great game to play. Probably relax, and there's probably gonna be some trigger warnings. So um, be wary about that. Like I always have to be wary about games that I play because the trigger warnings are certain things. Hence why therapy. But looks good. The art is good. Full on voiceover, which is fantastic as well. So definitely go give it a look when it gets released. So with that said, I want to say a massive thank you to Streaming Connect and the devs for allowing me to check the game out for a bit. So yeah, when the when the demo comes out, give it a try. And when the full release comes out, go grab it. So with that said, I've been Marty, or the Zebra Guy, however you want to know me as. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.